This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. not pull out of the UPA. Karunanidhi says the party will fight the 2G case legally and is not disappointed with the Congress for not helping. The DMK will hold public meetings from the 20th of this month to explain its position in the 2G case. The General Council to take a call on ties with the Congress. The Madras High Court says implement the uniform syllabus this academic year gives the state government power to modify content. After the syllabus, the focus shifts to the fee structure. The Justice Ravi Rajapandian Committee will release the new fee structure in three days. After Swaran Singh was shunted out of the Electricity Board in a few days, another top officer is transferred. Ramesh Raj Mishra is the new Home Secretary, replacing Sheila Rani Tumka. The state government sets out on a war footing to restore electricity to the state. Amma promised to set out uh, two malfunctioning power stations right. Jai Lalita pulls the plug on Karunanidhi's signature free colour television scheme. The scrapping of the project is announced in the Assembly today. And 2G accused Rajya Sabha MP Kanimudi goes to the Supreme Court for bail after being denied bail twice already. This is the Late Night News on NDTV Hindu. I'm Evelyn Matthew bringing you the news and updates. This are here are the national and the world headlines as well. With his blood pressure dropping and an affected liver, Baba Ramdev ends his fast at the Dehradun Hospital. A US court finds David Headley's accomplice Tawahu Rana not guilty of involvement in the 2611 attacks on Mumbai. India says it's disappointed with the Rana verdict. The National Investigative Agency will decide on filing charge sheets against Headley and Rana in an Indian court. Ten policemen killed in a landmine attack in Dantewada. Input suggest Maoist activity had increased in the area. And Shah Rukh Khan remembers the legendary MF Hussain, regrets not meeting him one final time. Our top story, the DMK has decided not to pull out of the government at the centre. Well, this decision was taken at a meeting in the city today, presided over by party chief M. Karunanidhi. The main reason for the strain in Congress-DMK relations has been the 2G scam, which has sent two senior DMK leaders to jail, including Mr. Karunanidhi's daughter, Kannimuri. The same telecom scam has also loomed over Mr. Karunanidhi's nephew, Dayanidhi Maran, who has been serving as textiles minister. Recent investigations by the CBI pointed to financial misconduct by Mr. Maran when he served earlier as the telecom minister and that had built pressure on him to resign. At the high-level action committee meeting today, the DMK condemned the CBI for linking the 2G scam to Kalanya television transactions and said it will continue to fight the charges against its top legal leaders legally. The party also slammed the CBI's double standards and said that it was uh, not legal to arrest one who was summoned. But more significantly, the DMK has decided to hold a series of public meetings between the 20th and the 30th of June, at, which, uh, at the end of which a general council meeting would be held in July. And our executive editor, English News, Sanjay Pinto, had uh, more of the dynamics playing at the DMK camp post their high-level meet tonight and how they plan to address the biggest to biggest scams haunting the party. The DMK's decision to not pull out of the government has come as a surprise, at least to journalists, but Karunanadi says that uh, the, it's the media which actually misinterpreted his remarks, particularly that comment in Thiruvarur. Now, this decision to stay with the alliance was taken at that meeting. You can see those visuals on your screen presided by the party chief, uh, Mr. Karunanadi. And of course, uh, the, the party has also decided to hold a series of public meetings between the 20th of June and the 30th. And of course, a general council would be held next month, as we said, in July. Now, the DMK, as we know, has come under fire in the 2G scam. First, it was A. Raja who, was, who had to resign. Then he was arrested. Then, of course, Kanimuri was charged sheeted as a co-conspirator in the 2G case. And now, more recently, even Dayanadi Maran uh, has come under the CBI scanner for his role as a telecom minister before A. Raja. So, clearly, uh, the DMK in a state of turmoil. 
but fighting back really not uh, taking any hasty decision at this stage. Let's go across to my colleague Lokpriya who's been right there. Lokpriya, I want to put you on the spot and ask you who changed Karunanandi's mind really? Was his mind made up before the meeting to actually, was he in a mood to actually snap ties with the Congress? Who changed his mind? Was it Alagiri? Well, yes, Sanjay, we, uh, the fact is that uh, the DMK is a divided house when it comes to uh, its decision with the Congress alliance. But uh, the final decision rests with uh, Karnanidhi. And it seems that the, uh, Karnanidhi went ahead with his elder son's advice that uh, through, uh, cutting ties with Congress at this point of time will prove extremely detrimental to the party because if they do so, then they have to face a very hostile government at this state. And if they snap the ties, there are all possibilities that Jalalta might tie up with the Congress in the same time. That will prove extreme, it will be a double whammy so of thoughts for the uh, DMK over here. So in keeping all that in mind, they said they thought that it, it, it will be only uh, effective that if they continue to be in alliance with the Congress at the center. So extremely cautious uh, move by Karnanidhi at this point of time because remember everybody is kind of waiting to see who will make that first move because more so in the Congress camp, they want the DMK to make the first move. But again, at this point of time, the DMK has put the ball back in the Congress's court. The DMK has firmly said that their alliance with the Congress stays. All right, Lokpriya, uh you were there at that press conference, at least part of it. Give us a sense of Karunanadi's mood, uh, you know, in, in politics, especially in political reporting. Uh, it's not just what you say, but also what you look like. So we often, as political journalists, read between the lines. And one way to read between the lines is to read body language. What was Karunanadi's mood like at that press conference? Well, Sanjay, even when Karnanidhi came into to attend that particular high-level meeting, he was extremely calm and composed. Not only Karnanidhi, but also all the leaders, they were seen cracking jokes and they were seen smiling. So, extremely calm and composed, not a sense of jitter or not a sense of anxiousness that was shown on their face. They were extremely calm and composed and their leader expressed the same. When he went, came, uh, got out of his car and went into that room to attend that high-level meet, he was calm and composed and he maintained this particular mood through, uh, throughout the press conference only for a little bit when he lost his school. Especially when journalists continued to press on the CBI report and also about Kanimuri's bail plea, he lost his school for about two minutes or so and he retorted saying back, why do you people keep pressing this uh, um, CBI case? Why don't you all ask about the Samachir Kalvi, the uh, High Court's verdict on uh, Samachir Kalvi? Why don't you ask me about that? Why don't you people do not have Tamil uh, uh, Unarchi? That's what he said. So at, only for about two minutes or so he lost his school. But immediately he recouped and he became calm composed once again so clearly they're perturbed that the media is hounding him when com when it comes to the CBI case and the Kanimuri but again being very very careful that he does not let out any kind of uh, signals so as uh, that will go out misinterpreted Sanjay all right the interesting points there you're making uh, Lokpriya but also uh, the fact that Ms. Jailalita is slated to go to New Delhi we are told next week and there's always the risk of uh, if the DMK had to pull out at this stage to pull the plug that was Jail Lalita with her nine MPs could have very easily replaced uh, the DMK at the center. Was this also one of the factors that weighed on Karunandi's mind, which is why he's decided to, if not completely give up uh, the plan to sever ties, but at least to defer uh, the decision? Yes, Sanjay, we can't uh, quote it that way also because this particular Jalalta's meeting that is planned to happen next time, uh, next week, next next, uh, next week, in a sense, Karnanidhi is now waiting to watch because if he pulls the plug at this point of time, it will prove extremely detrimental to him and his party because if he pulls the plug now, then Jalalta will definitely seize this particular opportunity and will make sure that she uh, goes with the Congress. So that is something that will prove very costly for the DMK at this point of time. So Karnanidhi again here waiting, uh, playing this game of waiting and watching and then carefully taking a decision. We are no. Uh, everybody knows that Karnanidhi is a man who does not take decisions in haste, and he carefully weighs every uh, uh, decision that he makes. And especially so, this particular decision was uh, uh, everybody was waiting with bated breath to find out what his decision is. So, in fact, it did turn out to be an anticlimax. But, however, the uh, political chanakya that Karnanidhi is, is perhaps something is cooking up in his mind, and he sure is to let out what that is in a few days from now. Especially that particular SC's verdict on Kanimuri can have will change a lot of things Sanjay. All right also what about Dayanandi Maran of course the demand for his resignation Dayanandi Maran of course defending himself stoutly saying that uh, he did not arm to Swish or Siva Shankaran to sell ASL there was no wrongdoing on his part also refuting allegations that uh, he had a private telephone exchange uh, in his residence. Uh, what was uh, Karunandi's response to a question on Dayanandi Maran? 
Well, Sanjay, when, when journalists post questions about Dayanidhi Maran, he said that Dayanidhi Maran will speak for himself and that he is not, he, he need not speak for Dayanidhi Maran. And he said that the CBI is investing the case and he also quoted that the CBI themselves have said that this is a six-year-old case. So he did not comment anything more on that. So it's uh, not really the, willing to sorry go to up on that. You, Lopria, did you get the impression that he was, because earlier a section of the media had reported uh, that uh, in fact uh, Maran was being sort of isolated, that he in fact uh, left Maran on his own to fend for himself. Did you get that impression? Yes, Sanjay, because uh, two, uh, two days back uh, when he attended a party of uh CADA's function. At that point of time also when journalists asked this question about the Maran, he said the same thing. He said that uh, Maran will speak for himself and later on that day in the early morning when I interviewed, when I asked Karnanadi, he said I do not know and the next thing he said, uh, the next press conference when he spoke to reporters, he said that Maran will speak for himself and that's the same thing he's repeating at this point of time also. We've got Karunanadi's uh, take on Dayanandi Maran on that specific question. Let's listen in. <laughs> நீங்க முயற்சி பண்ணா கேட்கலாம் ஆனா உண்மையா அல்லவா என்பதை சிபிஐ விசாரிக்கும் சிபிஐ இப்பொழுது அதை பற்றி ஆறு மாதம் ஆறு ஆறாண்டு காலம் இருந்த விஷயம் இது என்று சிபிஐ கூறியிருக்கிறது தயாரி மாறனுக்கு தெரியாது பதில் சொல்ல நான் சொல்ல வேண்டிய அவசியம் இல்லை அவரே சொல்லுவார் என்று அந்த கருத்து சொல்லப்பட்டது தவிர நீங்க கழகம் மூட்டுவதை போல All right, go, judging by the body language, he is clearly not uh, upset with Dhanandi Maran in any way. That's at least the impression one gets. Uh, Karunanandi is saying that Dhanandi Maran is in the best position to really answer those uh, allegations, those questions on whether he will resign or whether he should resign or not. And moving on, uh, in other news, during a reply to the debate on the governor's address, Chief Minister Jayalalitha assured that the public money spent on the construction of the new secretariat complex will not go waste. She also said that there was no politics involved in shifting the secretariat to Fort St. George. Pudiyya block A kattidam payan padutta padamal makkal panam veenadikka pattu vidum enru teemu kaavinar angal aikka thewa illai. In the Katyadam, Uriya Murayil, Payan Badatta Padum, Yen Badai Terevittu Kolkiri. In other news that made headlines today, the judgment over the uniform syllabus for schools in the state was out today, according to which the system will have to be implemented by this academic year itself. The Madras High Court has also stated the amendment to Uniform System of Education Act. It has also been announced that the government will now have the power to delete propaganda material in the curriculum. Jalalita had put uh, the uniform syllabus on hold, following which the AIA DMK government had formed a committee to revise the common syllabus. But it will be interesting to see how the government will now view this development and take on the case here on. Parallelly, the Justice Ravi Raja Pandian committee is now expected to come out with the fee structure on the 13th of June. The ambitious effort undertaken on the part of the state to bring in social justice and to have quality education will all come to naught if the selection of teachers is not made properly. The selection and appointment of teachers <coughs> cannot be made just like selection and appointment of a clerk. A teacher must love teaching. She must love children. We come across horrible news items of physical violence committed by teachers on children. If the teacher imparts joy and inculcates confidence in the child, the child will willingly go to school. Therefore, definitely, the state will have to look at amendments to the rules relating to recruitment of teachers if it seriously intends this act to transform the lives of children across the state, whether they are poor, disabled, living in tribal areas, whether they are girl children or children from downtrodden sections of society, or any child who does not have certain potential plus points, whom the state wants to uplift, and in order to attain a quality of excellence, we hope, therefore, the state will address its attention in this regard also. Recently, we read in the newspapers the findings of an NGO after a survey of schools in the country that our state has a very high percentage of student enrollment, but the quality of teachers is low. This may be challenged as inaccurate, but we insist that the state shall take steps to ensure that the teachers are of high quality. 
Well, we also caught up with the education activist Gajendra Babu, who had once said that putting the system on a hold was flimsy and evasive. Here's what he had to say in reaction to this new development today. The Madras High Court, after considering the various aspects and taking uh, the welfare of the students in its mind, uh, as stated the operation of Section 3, it is really a welcome move because four kinds of stream uh, in the school education is against social justice. So we wanted a common syllabus. We all know that common syllabus itself cannot become an equitable standard education. Still, common syllabus is a step forward, a step towards achieving the Samachir Kalvi or equitable standard education. In that way, this is a most uh, welcome uh, judgment of the Madras High Court. So what will the government do next? Well, posing that question to our senior correspondent, Peer Muhammad, who joins us live from our newsrooms right now. Peer, um, what really are the options before the state government now? Will they file a review before the bench? Uh, Evelyn, what we are hearing from the government sources is that Chief Minister Jayalalitha had consultations immediately after the development in the Madras High Court and uh, they had decided that uh, their position is legally maintainable. Uh, that is why they have already decided to go on an appeal. Uh, they go to the Supreme Court with a special leave petition against the judgment of the uh, first bench of the Madras High Court. That is the decision apparently taken uh, in the presence of Chief Minister by legal experts. Because time and again, as we hear the Chief Minister in the Assembly today, uh, she had said uh, they are not opposed. The ADMK is not opposed to uniform syllabus of education uh, because the ADMK is one party which supported uh, this Uniform System of Education Act 2010 when it was introduced by the then DMK regime. And uh, they are uh, interested in the education of downtrodden people, particularly those from the backward classes and Dalits, uh, Dalit communities. And they, uh, she has made it clear, to, uh, at least on two occasions, when uh, she introduced the amendment bill in the assembly, and uh, today again when she uh, answered the debate on the governor's address, she made it clear we are not opposed to it. That is only a propaganda that we are opposed to it. Only that the quality should be uh, ensured. That, that is why they have decided to appoint a expert committee. Now that uh, because they feel very strongly that their position is legally maintainable, they are they have decided to uh, go to the Supreme Court against this judgment because they don't have much options now to implement the High Court order because just five days to go for the opening of the schools. On June 15, the schools have to be reopened. Re now that they cannot modify or delete uh, or uh, you know, make any changes in the textbooks, uh, uh, very little time is given by the Madras High Court. That is the reason they have decided to go to the Apex Court uh, on an appeal and uh, get uh, this stay vacated on this Section 3 to the uh, existing act. Evelyn? Right. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Pete, for joining us with your inputs there on that big story tonight. Now, up ahead on the bulletin, Amma checkmates the powerless stations of DMK era by breathing life into two out-of-order plants. That's when we come back.